Welcome to Spotlight, a show about arts and culture in Marin, where we feature current events as well as seeking to understand what they mean for us as individuals and as a community. My name is Emily Murtaki, and I am part of a team working with the show's creator, Marin artist Susan Pascal Baram, to bring you these stories. Today, we are featuring Wonderfully Wild Marin, a fundraiser for open space and Marin created in collaboration with open space committees and organizations. The fundraiser is online at wonderfullywildmarin.com, where you can browse beautiful photos by renowned local artists, along with a calendar made from some of these photos available for donation. You can also learn about pop-ups, where these photos are on exhibit in safe outdoor venues, along with other holiday gifts. The value of the art in capturing and communicating the uniqueness of our natural world along with a tradition of stewardship here in Marin is what we are focusing on today in our panel discussion with some of Marin's top open space proponents. Many of these people are artists as well and foundation to the culture of open space in Marin. Sophie Tubman, a student liaison from Fairfax Open Space, leads today's discussion. Uh, I've grown up in Fairfax my whole life and I feel very lucky to have grown up on a lot of the open space trails which so many of these lovely people have worked to protect. I have been on the Fairfax open space for the past few months and will be on for the rest of the year as the youth member. Currently I've been helping with the Wonderfully Wild Marin website and calendar and it is important just as we talk about open space to acknowledge that a lot of this land was originally part of the Miwok Indians and actually right here we are on a burial mound. So it's just important to acknowledge where this land was and who originally had it and lived on it. So with that I would like to introduce themselves. So we'll start over here with Chance. Great, uh, my name is Chance Catrano. I am uh, Fairfax resident, currently on the Fairfax Open Space Committee, and I'm a council member elect here in Fairfax. I'm Martha Cherry. I've lived in Fairfax since Christmas 1993, and I am one of the founding members of the Fairfax Open Space Committee. Hi, I'm Jonathan Braun, and I'm a native of San Anselmo, and I uh, have I'm a member of the San Anselmo Open Space Committee since 1981. I was instrumental in the formation of the town's Open Space Committee, and I serve on the board of directors of the Marin Open Space Trust. Hi, uh, my name is Bill Long. I'm a resident of Novato. I've been a resident of Marin County for 50 years. Uh, I was a member for 10 years of the County Park and Open Space Commission, and uh, about 10 years ago began working with other commissioners to create the Marin Open Space Trust, known as MOST, to work with the county and the cities of Marin to preserve open space. Frank Aker here. My family's been coming to Fairfax since 1918. Juanita and I were married in Santa Rosa in 1959 and we moved to San Anselmo right away. Uh, three years later, we bought a little little home in Fairfax in the Cascades, and we've been there ever since. I was first appointed to the Fairfax Park and Recreation Commission in 1964, uh, and we and we were we, we initiated some open space purchases uh, in 1966. I was elected to my first term at age 26 to the Fairfax Town Council, where I, where I served for almost 40 years. Fairfax was the first community to avail itself of the, of the new, newly passed uh, countywide measure, I think it was called Measure A, uh, to purchase open space and agricultural lands, protect agricultural lands in the county. And in, uh, in 1972, uh, the Fairfax Council flipped, and uh, Ross Parkinson and Al Gayton were elected, and they teamed up with myself. and. Uh, we made that we uh, made the first purchase as a, at, from a request from Karen Urquhart from the Marine Conservation League to purchase the Elliott Nature Preserve, 
um, and uh, I w uh, Fairfax voted three to two to purchase it. Uh, I was threatened with a recall. They ran a full page ad in the Marin IJ said Frank Eggers wasting, wasting tax money buying open space. Who needs this open space? I still have the full page ad home. Um, we, we enlisted Pete Aragoni, who was then supervisor, his assistance, and uh, Fairfax purchased the lower 38 and a half acres up to the falls, and the county of Marin, with Pete Aragoni's uh, leadership, purchased the rest of the old, uh, Elliott, Elliott Ranch. Um, and today, the whole property, about 400 acres, is in public open space. And, and there's still a lot to do, so um, it's, been a, it's been a great ride here, and, 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 and uh, we're not done. Thank you so much for introducing yourselves. And now, I'd love, before we get into direct questions, just for people who heard a little bit about how open space relates to your guys' lives, but a little bit more about how the history of open space and also just your personal experience has moved you to get more involved. Um, so this is kind of just to anyone who feels moved to answer this question. Well, I can jump in on that if you like. So, as I said, I grew up in San Anselmo and um, at the top of a hill close to Bald Hill and the Marin Water District lands and, of course, hiked extensively all throughout that area growing up. Well, in about 1978, some developers came along, got a hold of the top of the hill where we lived and wanted to build a 19-unit gated community at the end of this dirt road an area that was just previously open and undeveloped. And so I was in my early 20s and um, I could not accept that outcome. So with the uh, collaboration of my neighbors and other people in San Anselmo, we went to public hearings, we gathered petition signatures. All of that led ultimately to asking the town council of San Anselmo to create an open space committee so that there would be a force to advocate for protecting the land and, and preserving open space. So that was, that actually happened in 1981, as I said. So that was the, the beginning of my involvement. And then, I mean, I could talk all afternoon about, you know, various uh, travails, being sued, being threatened, endless confrontations at public hearings and fundraising and the whole gamut of experiences to accomplish what we have. In San Anselmo, we've actually been able to acquire about 77 acres of land for open space so far. As a youth, I thank you for your work. That's, I certainly appreciate all the open space. Yeah. Thank you. I had a similar uh, background. Uh, as I mentioned, I live in Novato. Got there and saw all this wonderful open land around the town but found out that it was almost all privately owned and not open to the public. And I loved just to ramble in the outdoors with family, kids then, and couldn't do it. And in many cases, there were proposals, as Jonathan described, to build houses on these open parcels. So I got involved with the local supervisor, took advantage of the measure A that Frank mentioned, and started campaigns to buy up these individual parcels. So at this point, almost all of Novato's open space, surrounding open space, is owned by the County Open Space District. And the trails on those properties are open to the public. So it's a completely different situation. I feel uh, very satisfied with the efforts that uh, my and many other citizens put in on that uh, project. They're not finished, but we've uh, quite a ring of open lands. Moving to Marin, there's this rich, rich history of land conservation and this, this pride in being able to you know, walk on your work and, and, and the excitement that comes around. Like I, I, what Bill has said about you know, all this land being private at some point, and it goes back to the, you know, Europe and the fact that open space and hunting and access to streams and rivers, it was all based on the whims of like, you know, landed people, like a, like a small group of folks. And land saving is, is really this, this democratic process where we, we collectively own and have access to the commons. And I think it's, it's so beautiful and it, it, I, I feel like so, so grateful to even be sitting here with so many folks who have made it possible. And I think that's, that's the beauty of it is this intergenerational process of owning 
owning space together and uh, and being in place and being in community. So, yeah. Um, let's see. I've lived in a lot of places, and I grew up in Washington, D.C., um, in a very political family. And uh, that is a place where you watch policy being made, and uh, as you may know, that's uh, not a moral policy procedure. Uh, when I came to California to go to school in 66, um, I saw that we had a great deal of, of uh, pressure on all the remaining space. Um, the history of this area is uh, something I could orate on for a long time, so I won't. Um, but it used to be uh, a lot more lush and rich than it is. Um, I have a background in fisheries biology, and I came here at least in part because of uh, the last anadromous fishery that we have here. Um, and I've been watching uh, the losses over time. So now we have come to a moment in which uh, the, the earth is heating up, um, the fire seasons are longer, uh, the trees are subject to those stresses and bark beetles and phytophthora, and overuse. We as a species badly overuse the land. So about mm, 15 years ago, Frank said to me, hey, we're going to have an open space committee. You're on it. And I said, yes, sir, that's right. And uh, he said, well, we got to raise some money. We have to buy some land. I said, OK, we can do that. So we went to every merchant up and down this town. And every single merchant to whom we went said, absolutely, we're in. We'll give you money. We'll give you goods. We'll give you services. We'll give you time. It was beautiful. This town, we threw a party for open space committee in this town, and we packed the women's club. Um, our treasurer kept coming to me and saying, hey, we've got more people here than uh, the fire department allows. I said, well, how many do we have? And he said, well, uh, I'll have to count. I said, you do that and get back to me. And they kept coming in. Um, this town loves open space. And that's what it's about, community. Thank you all for sharing. Those are just such great stories and definitely give more light to why this is all happening and why we're all here. So on that, to the artists, I would love to hear a little bit more about your background in art and then kind of connecting to what this fundraiser is all about and how that all ties in back to open space. Um, I went to the Corcoran School uh, when I was in junior high school and high school. That's in Washington, D.C. Then I went to um, Cornell in finance, came out here, and um, you can't hear me, I'm sorry. Uh, I took up photography as a child but put it away during all the time that I was raising a family and working. I retired from the Public Utilities Commission at the end of 2015. And then I took, it, took photography up again. And I now have um, uh, a business, MountTamilPiasPhotos.com. And um, I'm putting together a book proposal about Mount Tamilpias uh, for UC Press. I hope something comes of it. And uh, I've spent most of my photography time since the end of 2013 in East County photographing the wildlife and the natural lands. Uh, it is my personal connection to the real world and one that I share uh, with my public uh, followers and friends on social media every day. Um, it is, uh, my 
source of joy and uh, my way of giving back to the community. I don't know if I have like a like a real story background in art myself. I mean, I've always been doing artsy things, but uh, I think the real connection for me with the fundraiser and with photography and, and land conservation is just acknowledging that there's always been this symbiosis between photographers and people who are in the land saving business. And, and looking back at people like Ansel Adams, who had an incredible career helping the Sierra Club to preserve places and, and give people a glimpse into these, these wild spaces all around the country that um, we collectively own. And uh, the same is true, it's, it's why I'm participating in the Wonderfully Wild Marin calendar. I'm super grateful to be a part of it, but it's, it's giving folks a glimpse into the different ways people see their open space and, and like uh, live within that open space and enjoy it. And uh, that, that for me is the, the real powerful connection between all of this is um, just the, the history of photography and, and helping people see and understand what's out there and maybe enchant them or, or, or invite them into open space and, and to enjoy it because it is it's it is wonderful and wild absolutely yes and i've just everything you guys have said has connected so much and seeing your art while making the wonderful Aldmarin website has been just so wonderful and everyone please <laughs> go look at it. it's in the calendar um, but on that actually connecting exactly what to Bill mentioned earlier we have a lovely quote from co-founder of Daywood Artists uh, Cheryl Miller and I'm gonna read it and then just kind of ask for people to respond to how they if this connects and kind of resonates although some of you have already connected it because that's how interconnected it all is but here it goes so over the years, I have heard viewers share how landscape art has deepened a sense of appreciation of Marin's beauty. They see views that went before unnoticed. That was, again, from Cheryl Mil Miller, who supports uh, environmental organizations. So, yeah, love to just hear your thoughts on that. Well, I'm probably repeating myself when I say uh, to bring a photo or a great painting of the outdoors into your house or your office <clears throat> or your desktop or your computer is a way to, to remind yourself while you're sitting there working or staring off into space of the beautiful outdoors around us and to sort of refresh your commitment to protecting those outdoors. I particularly love paintings or photographs with a picture of a trail in it because that is really inviting you to go out in your mind and explore that area that's in the photo and in the painting. Very inviting. What's, what's so inspiring about the calendar is that a lot of our residents here are so caught up in trying to survive with COVID, with, with being jobless, uh, some even homeless. Uh, they, they, they're not really being able to focus on just how wonderful it is here in our little town, in San Anselmo and Fairfax both. But that calendar, if we can get that calendar in our hands, and month after month as they flip it over and look at these photos, uh, it, it's gonna it's gonna reinforce uh, to them why they moved here in the first place. This is just a spectacular county, and, 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 and this is an opportunity for the calendars to help promote our county, protect our county, and raise funds for more open space. Well, um, from my perspective, uh, art and natural beauty is in many ways an antidote to the modern human world. And I, I really feel that uh, we're being impacted negatively by this new digital environment that is creeping up and seeming to take over everything. And to see a visual reminder of what the real world is around us is, I think, ever more crucial as a balance to, to what's happening. Good morning. 
uh, I go up on Mount Tam early. When some of the wildlife is having a drink and going back to bed, some are coming out for the day. And I take the pictures. I come home. I run them, I process the, the photos. And I post one or two on social media. And people say to me that it is for them solace. And their, their only connection with the real world. Um, that's all I think you need to say about it. it these crows have a lot to say about it. <laughs> all right, you guys. All right, come on. They're agreeing with you. They're agreeing. Art can remind people of the open spaces that they treasure, but it can also perhaps lead them into thinking all the open spaces that they see around them are preserved, and they're not. For example, the Wall property, which is right opposite downtown, most has been involved for years with folks on the Open Space Committee here in Fairfax and the town manager, former uh, council member, trying to figure out how to permanently preserve that. We haven't got it there yet, but uh, we're working on it. Likewise with Bald Hill, which is right next door in San Anselmo. There's, uh, pri that's private property, and there's uh, an opportunity to permanently preserve that as well. So uh, when you look at art that shows some open space, ask yourself, is that protected, or could that be the next site of a big development? Thank you all for that. And on that, how do you see open space and kind of just in general the natural environment in our community as part of Marin's culture, its community, and its history? And yeah, how does that all tie together as one connection to the open space? Over the years, those that have come before us have worked hard to protect open space. And it's actually our duty and our obligation to protect future open space for our future residents, the generations that are going to follow. Um, they, 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 need to, they need to understand the connection between living in a small town with open space all around and, 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 and not. Um, there's going to be so much pressure here in Marin. We see uh, state agencies say, oh, Marin, you know, you think you're so hot. Uh, you've got to share in providing housing for everyone. And, and we try to say, well, it's tough to provide housing up on a little narrow road on top of a hill. Uh, you know, we, we, we do our best to provide affordable housing here. Uh, but, but we are resisting that big state push to, to uh, add much more development to our community. So it impacts everything. It impacts mm -hmm. our air quality, impacts our water quality, and, um, and uh, it, it, it's about future generations that are coming. And one day, there'll be a group here, maybe 50 years from now, sitting here going, well, do you remember those 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 people back in Fairfax in, the, in the 2020 that were working to protect open space? And, and they'll, look, they'll say, Thank goodness they, 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 they had the future in mind. And so uh, that, that's what we're all about. And on that, as some of you have kind of mentioned, more directly connecting how the open space goes unnoticed, kind of just tying that into this event in general and how what you find the value of this and directly kind of taking all of this beautiful art and all of this movement and you know putting it into one tangible effort. What do you see as the value of that um, for the community and for open space as a whole? Well, for one thing, it's a record. We now know that everything is changing very rapidly. We may all burn up next year. We know that. This is a record that we're creating. It's a moment. When I came to California, I read about the history. I read John Muir and what he wrote about riding his horse through the Central Valley. The grass was so tall, it came up to the belly of his horse. I read about this county and how Paul Revere's nephew killed so many Tulio 
right over the hill in the valley that he made an arch over the road of elk antlers. I read about how people went through here and there was a guy down in southern Marin who got angry with a grizzly bear, so he lassoed it, and the grizzly bear led him and his horse out into the marshes, teaching the man that it was a bad idea to lasso a grizzly bear. That, we don't have any videography of that. What we have is here and now, and we have to treasure it. When discussing the preservation of open space in Marin County, I would just love to hear more about the issues that you all have faced in that and what you've heard about and also just kind of discussing how Marin's open space is typical and how it's also unique in its own right. So how that all ties into the preservation of it and how that process is possible but also abstains. About it. Well, I can jump in on that maybe a little bit. Cause yeah, um, this is a really great group here. We've all actually been right in the middle of the fight and, and doing the work that it takes to actually purchase land to create urban space. And the thing that I think is somewhat unique about Marin is that um, we are in a, um, in a very high economic value area. And so the value you're talking about just buying a land on the open market becomes a, a big challenge, and a lot of uh, a lot of um, the finesse in this is coming up with a value that's acceptable to a seller, and that yet we can somehow manage to raise funds to, uh, to do the acquisition. So that's been a big issue um, all along because the, the values are so high. And uh, there's been a, a tremendous pressure for development. You know, all these little pieces of land uh, have a target on them by the developer and uh, puts the pressure on us time-wise to, to work quickly. And yet, you know, there's only limited funds. There's only limited resources to, to do this. But, you know, we are lucky that the voters of Marin, and I think it was 1972, created the Marin County Open Space District. So there has been an overall county agency um, whose charge is to protect the land in Marin County. And it's only as time has gone by, there have been organizations like the Marin Open Space Trust, the Marin Agricultural Land Trust, and then local open space committees. And so the collaborations that have now formed between the various groups have been really instrumental in, in making, I know for the projects we've done that I've been involved in, they've always been at least three partner projects, often involving the County of Marin. Um, at the time, the Marin Community Foundation was funding open space. They were a partner, uh, the, the Open Space Trust. So, yeah. Um, Coalition building and cooperation has been is really the key. Uh, folks that that came before us that valued open space, worked to protect it, and, and actually donated. Um, an example is this is actually Sonoma County. Sonoma County just purchased a little over 500 acres just outside of Monterey, and the Tor family, which has been there since the 19th century, uh, owned the land and developers were trying to buy it and the family always said, said no, no, no. And as the family aged, they thought, well, maybe this is our legacy to our community. And they offered the county of Sonoma the 500, I think 530 acres at a very reasonable price. In effect, they, they partially donated and, and, and it was partially, partially purchased with the, the Sonoma County so the Open Space Trust Land. Um, and, and I think we still have that opportunity right here in Marin. There are folks who have who have who, who have held land for a long time, and, and some of the ranchers uh, in, in, in the valley in West Marin. Um, and those ranchers, one day that they'll be moving on, uh, hopefully that they'll, uh, in effect, maybe make a partial donation with a partial partial purchase for, for some of these lands. Um, 
and that's the way we can thrive. That there's still philanthropists around that, that, that have money. You know, most of us are all just working people, but there are people, folks around with money that they can help uh, help purchase uh, some of these properties and, and donate some of these properties. It's true that uh, property is expensive in Marin uh, because it has potential for development. And it's that potential that drives the valuation of the property. So you're competing with the potential use of the property when you buy it for open space. But there's a savings to the public from acquisition of open space compared to development. Because with development, you have support costs, sewer, water, as Martha said, roads, and ongoing services. So studies have shown that in many cases it's wiser for a community, more economical for a community, to buy up open space uh, rather than let it be developed with high intensity, costly, uh, expensive housing. Um, two, two thoughts. Uh, the first is to the question of the uniqueness of Marin. And I've lived in a couple different places, uh, but I, what really set me off on the understanding how unique Marin is from a land conservation perspective is reading a book called Cities in the Wilderness by a former Secretary of the Interior under Bill Clinton. Uh, his name is Bruce Babbitt. And he was talking about land-saving innovation all, all across the country from Arizona where he was governor to Las Vegas and everywhere in the West. and, and and he was talking about different communities that were trying to be innovative, but he was like, you know, there's struggles everywhere unless you're Marin County. And like singled out Marin as this place where we got it right, where we figured it out early enough and set enough land aside. And um, I think about that a lot when I think about Marin and, and it's borne out in, in the policies that we set. I mean, the, the creation of the open space district, that, that happens in a lot of places, but you know, in 2017, I, I worked on uh, a campaign to renew Novato's urban growth boundary. And these are approved in Novato and here in Marin, and they're approved up in Sonoma as well, recently too, recent successes. And it's, it's an example of communities understanding the, that at some point you have to say enough uh, and, and that you need to leave enough space set aside for, for recreation, public health and access. And, and also for the wildlife that we coexist with. Um, and, and so that's the, the piece about the uniqueness that I, I think about. Like The other thing that I, I'm thinking about is when we think 100 years out or 1,000 years out, it's one thing to, to purchase land for millions of dollars, and it's a whole other thing. What, what David Brower, uh, former executive director of the Sierra Club, which Frank mentioned he had worked with him, uh, he talks about CPR. So conservation, preservation, and restoration. restoration. And that's, that's a, a big ticket now when we're talking about climate adaptation and trying to figure out how we hold this land and manage it into the future for seven generations out, you know? Uh, so that'll be a big question for us as we think about renewing Measure A and we think about, can we set some money aside for San Anselmo open space so they can get Bald Hill or, or for Fairfax open space so we can try to work on a couple parcels here in town um, and make sure that we have enough money to, to upkeep those parcels uh, into the future. As we're heading, heading towards the end of the questions, um, I'd love for all of you to discuss a little bit more about um, what other ways to help Marin open space for individuals, businesses, etc and any advice you have for well, what, what, what we see in Marin, um, a lot of open space around us, and, and, and we're the place that folks from all over the Bay Area and beyond come to recreate. They love it here. Mm -hmm. um, so the businesses that are here are able to actually survive, capitalize on, on the recreation pursuits of folks coming to Marin to enjoy the open space here. You know, we see it in Point Reyes Station, we see it in Stinson Beach, uh, the Valley. We're fortunate this is a coastal county and 
we're in the a part, part of Marin is in the coastal zone, so uh, there are, there are other ways to help fund some of this open space in in Fairfax and San Anselmo, and that's through the Coastal Conservancy, uh, protect fisheries and, and it, uh, watersheds for our streams here. That that we should take advantage of those opportunities from the Coastal Conservancy to purchase some, some of these uh, watershed lands around us and to help the fisheries in turn bring more bring more guests to come to Marin to visit us. Um, you know, we're doing, we really are doing our share. If they act like here in Marin we're a bunch of snobs and we just, we're just concerned about open space. We're providing this recreation here and, 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 and we're, we're helping fund the services for, for, for those folks to come over and enjoy our, our, our town. So it, it's a, it's a win-win for everyone, open space. So I, I would just say two things um, from a practical point of view for people that would want to support open space in Marin County. And one of those is uh, to be aware of and to participate locally in your community where you live. Um, make your, avail yourself of agendas at public meetings before the planning commission and town councils because there's a lot of decision making that happens that affects our physical environment in these places and with the politicians and uh, committee members, commission members that are involved. And they really need to hear from the public and hear from people uh, their feelings on this. Extremely important. I've you know, spent a lifetime, I can't even calculate how many thousands of hours in public hearings I've spent. Somebody like Frank even dwarfs my extensive experience, but that's where the real nitty-gritty happens. The other thing I would say is be generous and support the, the groups that are really on the ground doing the, um, the tough stuff, the, the real nitty-gritty to, to practically make this happen. And because, uh, you know, there, there is some extent of public funding, but it's not great. And these projects do rely on the generosity of, of supporters, so just putting in a plug for local support. Thank you. Well, I'll add to that, uh, please remember to support the renewal of Measure A, that's the quarter cent sales tax. They've mentioned it. Uh, that'll be on the ballot in 2022. It's vital to the future of the open space district. Uh, it was originally passed in 2011. And the emphasis then was on restoration of the properties that were owned by the county. They are taking a beating, particularly during the COVID epidemic. The use of trails is up substantially, and you can see it in the way the trails are being beat up by bikes, by people on foot, horses. They need a lot more work than they're getting right now. There's a lot of deferred maintenance. Uh, out in the open space, and it just gets to be more and more expensive to deal with erosion and, and problems, stream sedimentation, and so forth. So please follow the renewal of Measure A, support it, and uh, remember to vote for it, and get everyone else to do the same. So I would just say one more thing, in addition to, yeah, my, my mentor who, who passed away this summer, his name was Huey Johnson. Um, and he was big in the land saving business as well, uh, all over the country. But uh, like like Frank has said, uh, you know, persistence is the only tool we have. And uh, and so just you know, enjoy your open space. And uh, and when when conversations get tough, uh, just persist. Thank you all so much. It is scary but exciting to think about 100 years from now. And yeah, we'll see what happens. But thank you all so much for being here. And not only that, but just your work in general. So please, everyone watching this, go check out Wonderful Wild Marin, the calendar, and appreciate the work that's been put into the wonderful open space that's on display. And then also the artwork and the artists who put it there. So just thank you all so much. This has been wonderful. Um, well, thanks, and I, I really appreciate you all setting up this opportunity for us to have a little discussion about something that's been really extremely important in my life and a focus of my life's work. I really hope that the motivation is there and inspiration and 
maybe seeing some beautiful artwork, maybe going on a hike to a really special place and, and just really connecting will be the thing for people. And in some small way, maybe the work we do can facilitate that. I, I certainly hope so. Well, I am heartened to see younger people picking up where Jonathan and I have been working for a number of years. So that gives me hope that Marin will continue to protect this open space, will expand its network of trails, protected properties, streams, and other natural assets. Because uh, we won't be around here in 50 years, but the young folks will, and uh, we can carry on the traditions in our absence. Go for it.